friends! Today, we will compare cohesion and adhesion. We will also learn about capillary action. So, let's start. Let's first compare cohesion and adhesion, which we learned in our last video. Cohesion is the force of attraction between molecules of the same substance. Adhesion is the attraction between molecules of different substances. Cohesion can be called as an intermolecular attraction, whereas adhesion can be called as an intramolecular attraction. Cohesion includes van der Waal forces and hydrogen bonding. Adhesion includes electrostatic attractions. The drops of water sticking to each other is an example of cohesion. Spreading a water on a solid surface is due to adhesion. Or, liquid wets the cloth due to adhesion. Water sticking to itself is an example of cohesion. Water sticking to other things is an example of adhesion. Cohesion results from water-water bonds or hydrogen bonding. Adhesion results from water-solid bonds. Cohesion is responsible for the surface tension of a liquid that forms a skin on the water upon which insects can move as if they walk on a solid surface. Adhesion is responsible for the formation of a meniscus. Drinking with the help of a straw is also possible due to cohesion. Adhesion exists between water and the plant cell walls. Together, cohesion and adhesion form the capillary action, which lets water be transported to higher parts of the plant against gravity. Now, let's learn about capillary action. Capillary action is the ability of a fluid to flow upwards in a narrow tube or along the surface in spite of the opposing force of gravity. Let's first have a look at some examples that show capillary action before we learn about the science behind the actual process. Have you ever wondered how water that we add to the roots of the plants reaches the topmost part of the plant? It is due to capillary action that lets the water move upwards in narrow tubes inside the plant stems. Let's try to understand capillary action with the help of a small experiment. Take a glass of colored water, say blue water, and dip a folded tissue paper in it. Wait for some time and you will see that the water travels up the rest of the tissue paper. This also shows that water travels up narrow spaces against gravity. This is capillary action of the water. You can also take a small amount of colored water and put it in a plate. Then, dip a tissue from its edge, but the colored water will still travel up. So, this is also called capillary action. Here we have another example. We often cut flowers in a vase of water, and the water keeps them fresh by moving up to every flower. This is also due to capillary action. Have you ever seen anyone giving a blood sample? Here, the blood also travels up a narrow tube. So, the water travels up narrow spaces or narrow tubes due to capillary action. Now, we will understand the science behind the process. Take a glass of water and put a straw in it. You will notice that the level of water is higher in the straw than that of the glass. So, the water is moving upwards against gravity. Speed of this water moving up or the capillary action depends on cohesion and adhesion that we just studied. Cohesion is when the water molecules are naturally attracted to each other and this forms temporary hydrogen bonds which causes the water to stay together and not spread like gases. Adhesion is the attraction of water molecules towards other types of molecules, called hydrophilic molecules, present in some solids. Capillary action occurs when adhesive forces become stronger than cohesive forces. That is, the water molecules are attracted to each other, and at the same time, they are attracted to the molecules of the inner surface of the tube, for example, a straw, 
but the force of attraction towards the straw is more. So the water molecules travel up along the inner surface of the straw. Now let's try to understand capillary action even more. Liquids are actually sticky, as in they stick to themselves as well as other substances. Liquids attracted to each other is known as cohesion, and liquids attracted to other substances is known as adhesion. Let's take an example of drinking a liquid with a straw. The liquid molecules inside the straw experiences attraction towards the molecules of the straw, and there is also attraction between the molecules of the liquid itself. But as a small amount of water is in the thin straw, the surface of adhesion to volume of the water ratio is large. So adhesion bonds overpower the cohesion bonds and win to attract water towards themselves, which is why a meniscus is formed and water travels upwards. The height to which this capillary action will take the water up in the straw depends upon the surface tension and gravity. This pulling action of capillary action will be limited by surface tension and gravity. The liquid will travel up the straw until its weight is exactly balanced by surface tension and gravity, and it will eventually stop moving upwards. When we dip a tissue paper or a towel in a liquid, water travels up the tiny spaces in the paper, and it is due to capillary action. Now, let's conduct another small experiment. Take a container of water and dip four different straws of different diameter. Now, examine. The height of water in the straw will be the maximum in the straw whose diameter is a minimum, and the height of water will be the least in the straw with the maximum diameter. Why does this happen? The thinner the straw, the lesser the water will be there in the straw as a result. The weaker the cohesion bonds will be. So, it will be more easy for the adhesion bonds to pull up the water as an adhesion to the cohesion ratio will be more in the case of the thinner straws which is why water travels up more in the case of the thinner straws. And this action of water moving up, or capillary action, is also called wicking. So friends, we have learned a lot about cohesion, adhesion, and capillary action. We will learn more details about capillary action in the higher grades.